Now, let's talk about another breaking story here that developed over the weekend, and that is some B.C. churches uh, continuing to defy the ban on in-person religious celebrations. We saw several churches in Chilliwack once again opening their doors to worshipers uh, yesterday on Sunday. Now, the latest from the RCMP on that, the Fraser Valley RCMP saying they are investigating a number of churches for ho- for hosting in-person religious services yesterday. Uh, they will not say precisely how many churches are being investigated, but uh, not ruling out bringing the hammer down here. A $2,300 fine is the potential penalty for opening your doors uh, to worshipers for in-person religious services. All right, lots of interest among our listeners on this show. So let's talk a little bit more about it now with my guest, Levi Minderhout. He's the BC manager for the Association Reform Political Action in Canada. I'm very pleased to welcome him back to the show. Levi, thanks a lot for coming on. Hey, I'm glad to be back on the show. Okay, Levi, you represent a lot of churches who are concerned uh, about this ban on in-person ser- uh, services. Does it surprise you uh, to see some churches opening their doors here on the weekend. Most churches are staying shut, but clearly some are willing to defy the ban. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. The thing is with this health order is that when it forbids in-person worship services is that it puts many, many Christians in a very, very difficult situation. So on the one hand, most Christians, myself included, take very seriously the commands in the Bible and God to obey and to re- submit to our government authorities, because we believe that the government is to act for the good of Christians and for all Canadians as well. But on the other hand, right. most Christians, myself included, we take very seriously the command to worship in person regularly. So many Christians and churches are taking that those two commands and really wrestling about how to <clears throat> obey them as faithfully as possible, but still take have both of those at the same time. And so many churches and many individuals are making very conscientious decisions about how to act for some that will include worshiping on Sundays. Okay. Why can't you just worship at home though? So you, you, in some ways you can worship at home. For instance, you can uh, tune into a live stream to hear a sermon, but corporate worship, at least in the Christian tradition that I'm a part of, corporate worship is more than just listening to a sermon is also singing with the people around you is also participate participating in communion or the Lord's supper which you can't do over the internet it also involves praying together as a as a body of people receiving god's blessing corporately also um uh, confessing god's name together as a huge group and that's something you just can't get online okay. and I, i'll just remind quickly listeners and sure. everyone that even when there, we were allowed to worship in groups of 50, that still meant that large portions of congregations had to worship online for the entire pandemic. So it's not like we can just switch all to online worship. We've been doing that for months and months and months already. Okay, most churches, though, are going with the, the ban and not defying the ban. Just a small number of churches, and largely in Chilliwack, opening their doors once again on Sunday. Let me play this here for you, Levi. This is uh, Melissa Skelton. She is the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in Metro Vancouver. She was a guest on the show here last week. We talked a lot about these issues. We got a lot of reaction to the interview. The Anglican Church is abiding by the ban. They are not opening their doors. But I asked her, what about some of the complaints you hear from people who go to church saying like, well, how come you can still go to a bar? How come you can go to a Walmart, but you can't go to church? And here's what she told me. Uh, I try to focus on what we can do and what our mission as a church, you know, as as an Anglican church and as the Anglican church in this area is, and it's about the protection of life. It's about Mm. uh, actually doing things that cost us a little bit in order to protect life of other people, not only our own parishioners, but but people in the community. So uh, it's a a big job uh, assisting the churches to do that and and encouraging them to keep doing it, and that's what I try to focus on. I don't focus on on what's happening at liquor stores. (laughs) Okay, I thought she made an interesting point there, Levi, when she talked about the focus on the protection of life, and obviously, you know, a lot of Christian denominations are are pro-life, anti-abortion. I mean, wouldn't that extend to trying to keep people People safe and healthy and alive during this during this pandemic. I mean, isn't that part of being pro-life to keep people safe from this virus? It absolutely is a central belief and uh, action from all Christians to try to protect and preserve human life. Your churches right. and Christians are right to do that, but 
even churches that opt to remain open, I know that they're taking, I am sure they're taking all sorts of precautions about wearing masks and social distancing, doing everything in their power to try to prevent any spread of COVID transmission. So they're not trying to gather in complete defiance and saying they're having no safety precautions whatsoever. They are still taking that idea well, that you well, need to hang, protect human life very seriously. But hang on, they are they are still in complete defiance of this ban because the, the public health order is very clear. The ban is on in-person religious celebrations and services. So when you open your doors and you invite people to come in, you're defying this order and potentially risking the spread of the virus. Right? But life is, so life is more than just about physical health, though. So in having a worship service, there's also things to be considered con- contributing the spiritual life, the emotional health, the mental health of people who attend there as well. So it's not just yeah. about protecting physical life from COVID-19. There's all many other ways that even worshiping together as members of the body of Christ that helps facilitate, helps protect human life. Okay, do you think there'll be a court case? Last question for you. Do you think there'll be a court case on this? Because I've talked to some lawyers who say, well, maybe the churches have got a case here. When you take a look at the Canadian Char- Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it's right up there at the very top, freedom of religion. Do you think there's a court challenge blooming? So I just want to be clear before I, I end off here that our organization doesn't take a position of whether churches should obey or disobey or launch a challenge or not launch a challenge. But yeah. I would not be surprised if some churches do come together and come to a, a legal issue, a legal court challenge on this. And I think that's a legitimate way to go. Our government is divided into the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches and asking one branch of government to talk and check if the other branch is doing something correctly, is doing something constitutionally. I think that's a fundamental feature and not a bug of our system. Levi, thanks for coming on again. Okay, thank you for having me. Okay, I, you bet. That's Levi Minderhoud from the Association for Reform Political Action. He represents uh, churches in British Columbia. Okay, here's what I want to do right now. Take a break, come back. Let's open the phone lines on this one. So once again, as expected, we saw some churches, small number, largely in Chilliwack, open their doors to worshipers once again on Sunday in defiance of the provincial health ban on in-person religious celebrations. 